we're going to talk about or answer the question, are you a renegade? Um, which I think is just such a wonderful word. And of course, my guest, and I'm going to tell you more about her in a few minutes, is Meryl Cook. Corinne, welcome. Glad to have you here. Natasha, thanks for being here. Awesome. So yes, we are, you know, pleased to have you with us. And if there's anything you want to tell us in chat about where you are in the world or um, anything about why you've chosen to come, if you own your own business, involved in customer service, any of those things you want to put in chat, please feel free to do that anytime. Oops, went too fast. So yes, my guest is Meryl Cook. And we were just chatting before uh, starting that we've probably known each other about 12 years. We're gonna tell you a bit more about that in a second, but she is color, texture, joy, and self-compassion. Really defines her work as a fiber artist, a writer, and a facilitator uh, living in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia with a view of the ocean. Um, as an artist, Meryl is becoming best known for use of her, the chakra colors and her Wild Woman series, which is in an art gallery or part of it is in an art gallery here in Halifax. She recently did a series called Ode to Lisa Laflamme and devoted it to renegade women with gray hair and lots of attitude, um, which people are really enjoying online and otherwise. Um, so her mission is to inspire all of us to find joy and a renewed sense of purpose really throughout our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And she's the author of two books, which I have both of them here and I've given them away as gifts. Um, One Loop at a Time is a story of rug hooking, healing and creativity, which uh, kind of follows you on your journey with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. my journey post breast cancer post and breast post, cancer. Uh, post treatment yeah and then one loop at a time which is a creativity workbook and uh, really very valuable so in chat I just want to say um, Dorote is saying I'm a goldsmith in Halifax and am in contact with my clients regularly mm -hmm. the topic got me yes I am a total renegade you are or I wouldn't be an entrepreneur. And then Corinne is sharing, I am in Halifax and own online legal essentials, Inc. an online legal platform for Canadian business owners. I'm a big fan of Meryl's and love to hear her speak. And you are also a renegade, Corinne. Yeah. <laughs> um, Linda Daly has joined us. Welcome, Linda. Thanks for being here today. So a bit of a story. Um, so I had an office for several years in Dartmouth and right at the corner of Albany and Portland. And I had a window that looked down, I was on the second floor and I had a window that looked down on the street and there was this colorful, energetic woman that would walk in on the ground floor of an office across the street. It, this was when you were, um, in healthcare, really, right? I was a homeopath. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we would see each other and we knew we were seeing each other. <laughs> so finally, I think you did the first move. I think you waved. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't know each other's names or anything, but from that point on, we would wave to each other, good morning, or smile at each other or whatever. And then finally we met, um, and, and really started getting to know each other and have been uh, colleagues and friends since. Is that how you remember it? Oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was so delightful. It was like a big city story, but really small city too, mm -hmm. that you would get to know somebody simply by looking out your window. <laughs> and them looking out their window at the same time. So yeah. yeah, it was Lovely. pretty awesome, pretty mm -hmm. awesome indeed. So we've stayed in touch ever since. Derek Percival is here. Welcome, Derek. And um, I am a big fan of Meryl's in many, many ways. And I've read both her books and attended most of her events. And right beside me, I'm not going to get up, but 
right beside me, I do have one of her um, pieces of artwork on the wall. I chose the woman with the crazy red hair because it reminds me that I used to have crazy red hair. <laughs> okay. So before we do anything else, what I wanted to share with you was some information on what the word renegade means. And it actually comes from 1580s Spanish. And it started out primarily as a, a term of somebody who abandons their religious faith. Mm -hmm. And specifically at the time it was, if Christians became Muslims, then they were called a renegade. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the 1660s, it took on the meaning of somebody who moves from their camp, so to speak, um, to the enemy side. So you can see that both of these things are big moves, right? Where you would really stand out in a crowd if you did these things. But the more modern meaning is someone who has rejected the traditional or who is unconventional. So what we wanna find out before we um, you know, learn anything else from you is that we want to find out a bit more about you and how or if you are a renegade. So I'm going to launch some questions here. The first one is, do you consider yourself a renegade? And you have three answers to choose from, yes, no, or maybe. So let us know if you consider yourself a renegade. Um, if you do, then you wanna go down to question two, which is if yes, have you always been a renegade? Or maybe, oh, someone's already said yes for at least the past 10 years. Okay, that's great. And then if your answer is no, are you hoping to become a renegade? So somebody's <laughs> already said yes to that. So um, I'll give it a few more seconds with those three questions and see what else we, we can find out. And when I end the poll, I'll be able to share the results with you so you can see uh, what people, what participants are thinking in terms of their renegadeness, which is probably not a word, but... Um, I'm going to check chat here. Oh, okay. That's weird. Dorothy, sorry about that. Should just start with the third question in order to submit. So that's kind of strange. I probably, that's probably something I did in the setup differently than I should have. Okay, I'll just wait another 10 seconds or so, and then I'll share the results with you. The poll is fun, isn't it, Dorothea? I, I think it's a great idea. It is fun. I think it is a lot of fun to have, but I think I probably should have put the questions in separately instead of the way that I did it, but anyhow. Okay, so I'm gonna end the poll and I'm gonna share the results. So um, for the first question, do you consider yourself a renegade? 83% of you said yes. Um, with only one person saying no. So of those that said yes, um, have you always been a renegade? 50% of you said, yep, always been a renegade. And one person said, nope, I've only recently become a renegade. Awesome. And then 33% said yes for at least the past 10 years. So this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And if no, are you hoping to become a renegade? 83% said yes. And one person said, seriously thinking about it. So that's your audience, Meryl. Exactly. We can help you with that. <laughs> we can. So I'm going to leave this up as we're going through, you know, whatever stands out for you or any questions you have, just keep adding them to chat as we go. I'm going to monitor chat and Meryl and I are, are going to have a conversation. So I'm going to stop sharing. And we'll come back to this slide deck later. So, Meryl, tell me your renegade story. <laughs> well, 
I always have been a renegade. Um, and I guess one of my renegade stories that we were talking about the other day, Mary Jane, was uh, when I was in grade nine, I was taking home economics. And as the eldest child of a parent who was an alcoholic and the other who was working full time, I was basically um, subbing in as a caregiver for my family. So when they were teaching us how to set the table and how to pour tea and, you know, I, I just started causing trouble because <laughs> I was really, really bored. So they gave me the opportunity at that time to uh, go into automotive class. Um, at that time, girls were not allowed in automotive class and I was just thrilled. So yeah, I got myself kicked out of home ec and uh, I luckily got to take home, I get to take auto. So that was my, one of my first renegades. One stories. of your early renegade stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you, for, when we were first talking about the idea of spending this half hour together, I said, oh, I don't I even know that I am a renegade. <laughs> <laughs> so as I thought about that a bit more, um, and in our recent conversation, I shared with Meryl that, um, so I grew up in a very small town and I went to Catholic school and uh, you did things a certain way was expected of you. And there were one incident which uh, stands out was being in religious studies, which was mandatory, of course. And um, I guess we were talking about the rosary and the power of the rosary. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, okay. So then I asked a question. I said, well, I understand that if everybody said the rosary for world peace, we would have world peace. But is it possible that if everybody ate ice cream for world peace, we would have world peace? And I got kicked out of class for that. So... <laughs> I think that was the beginning of it all, uh, or close to the beginning of it all. So how does this renegadeness influence your business? Well, certainly um, as an artist, so I, I, I left my practice as a homeopath, which was al already sort of a renegade field to be in right now it's That's not true. a very field but I left my practice and decided uh, that I didn't know what I was going to do and I started to write and to rug hook every day and uh, became an artist that I never thought I could actually be and as a rug hooker uh, so that was my main modality at first my main medium um, my rug hooking is not at all like the traditional rug hooking and uh, I use a variety of fibers. I don't keep all my lines straight. There's never any straight lines in most of my work. And, uh, and I just really broke from the traditional uh, rug hooking field. And I also used my journaling as um, inspiration for all of my pieces. So my pieces are not just about how they look, but there's always an underlying message, right, about uh, uh, becoming your best self, for example, in, one of, in many of them. But um, so what, what I found was that as I started creating and I created um, my Wild Woman series, in fact, I, I did my Ode to Lisa La Flemme series and, and I'm pretty excited. So what, what the renegadeness is, it opens doors for me, I think is what it does. And so a door that is opening for me now is that uh, I'm starting a webcast series in the fall and uh, Lisa La Flemme, who I got in contact with, got introduced to because I started the Lisa La Flemme series, um, has agreed to be my first guest. <laughs> so, so it just feels like when I um, really um, reach out and, and go beyond, um, I hate this phrase, but beyond my comfort zone, if, if I display great courage and just say, well, I'm going to ask, you know, and, and then things start to open and start to flow. So I would say that being a renegade has allowed me to establish my own style in my art. So my style is very recognizable. Um, many people uh, say that you, they can see a piece of my work and know that it's mine. So that's that's when you have when you know you've got a style. Um, and it's just in case yeah, people don't know, open doors for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, in case people don't know Meryl, um, just do a quick synopsis of who Lisa Laflamme is and what. Oh, yes. Heard. So Lisa Laflamme uh, 
is a very well-known media personality in Canada and across the world who uh, took advantage of the pandemic to let her hair go gray uh, because of course there were no hairdressers open and other things as, as you know, Mary Jane, you did the Thank same you. thing. And, uh, and for a woman in the media, this was a very bold um, and renegade move. And it did have some consequences for her, which I know she doesn't want to talk about anymore. And uh, she's, she's moving on. She has um, this saying that says the, uh, the comeback is way better than the setback. So, <laughs> so anyway, she's, uh, she's a woman that is inspiring many others by making a choice to be different, to stand out uh, from the culture that she was in. Right. Yeah, the traditional. Yeah. The traditional. And it has opened doors for her as well, which she'll talk about when, when I interview her in the fall. She's doing stuff all over the world, really interesting, um, very powerful kind of work. So, so I think it opens doors when you're a renegade. I think it does. I think it helps you find your people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, uh, I, th I think everybody on this call, almost everybody on this call is uh, a, a entrepreneur to some extent, and that's a crowded field. But when we're truly ourselves, I think it actually attracts our customers or our people to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dorothea is saying, absolutely, even if it isn't comfortable, thinking outside the box, especially not listening to official business advice, has brought me where I am today, 20 years in business. Mm -hmm. It has also made me become one of the very few goldsmiths pursuing true ethical materials. Mm -hmm. That really makes you stand out, Dorothea, and it's something yeah. that I appreciate. So obviously, I'm one of your tribe. Yes. Um, yeah. And she says, like, she's rarely regretted it and that's I think the point and also probably to some extent um, both Meryl and uh, Dorothea are leading something mm -hmm. so there will be others that follow in your footsteps because of mm -hmm. what you've done do you feel that happening Meryl do you feel that you're seeing the arts come into because I know you also do workshops mm hmm so absolutely, I'm, I, I do workshops uh, in the corporate setting where instead of having people sit around a table and talk about a vision statement, I actually get people to learn how to rug hook that and also to create pieces that reflect their vision for their workplace, which they work on together and then they're hung as an, as, as an installation in their workplace. So it's, it's really... Um, the people who hire me to do this are renegades themselves, right? They're, they're leaders, oh, um, generally in that 30, 30 to 45 age group there, and men, men, many women that have hired me who, um, who want something different for their groups, want something different for their teams. Their teams are telling them that they're tired of doing the same old you know, are you in the red ocean or the blue ocean quiz, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, and they want um, something that will just kind of level the playing field, uh, which when you're teaching a new skill, um, it does level the playing field because even the, nobody really knows how to rug hook uh, in most places that I go and teach it. So it's, it's, um, that's right. Yeah. Whether you're a manager or you're um, the person who answers the phone, you know, you're all learning and it, it really is a wonderful equalizer in that way. Yeah. And I find that, um, and I do consider myself a renegade being the phone lady mm -hmm. for the last 17 years, but I became an entrepreneur originally in 1987. And at that time, people didn't quit their jobs to start a business. Like it wasn't a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was working for McLean Hunter, which later became Rogers, uh, as a journalist. And I still remember people walking past my office the last few days I was there just going, you're doing what? <laughs> <laughs> and did they think you were brave or did they think you were stupid? Like, well, stupid. Right well, out of my mind. Mm -hmm. right out of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and to some extent, I probably was. But anyway. Yeah. We had the same reaction when we moved to the Northwest Territories when we had just started our family. So I had a newborn and we moved up to Rankin Inlet and our friends here were like, you're doing what? Like, why are you going up there? And, and it was really our sense of adventure. And, and um, we got to do jobs that we would never have 
gotten to do in the south because we would have needed I would have needed a PhD to do the kind of work that I did in the you north did up there yeah so again it was an opening doors uh, kind of thing but people thought we were out of our minds um, yeah so I think that that as you've said it opens doors and it also makes you stand out mm -hmm. um in a crowded world right there's so many um sales people there's so many trainers there's so many um experts mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. and when you can embrace what is unique to you which i think is is fair to say what we mean by renegade to some degree Mm -hmm. Yes, it's about going against the traditional, but often that is unique to us anyway, that we have yeah. something in us that isn't mm -hmm. traditional. Is that fair to say? Yeah, and it's it's really expressing what is inside us. You know, that's that's kind of what I specialize in my work is getting people to tap into that. Of, um, you know, what what is it you really want? What's in your heart and what feels right? And, you know, as Dorote said, uh, I've often gone against traditional business advice. Um, to say, okay, well, does this feel good? And, and when I do things like think, okay, well, I'm going to make this because I think it will sell. It never sells for me. <laughs> it never sells if I do the research, you know. But but if I say, oh, I'm really inspired to do this piece, and I hope someone will resonate with it, it it usually happens, you know. It's, it's, and it's so. Is that too about following your instincts versus your? I think it's following your heart and your heart. Um, really, what I talk about is uh, I talk about what makes your heart sing. Like, so if you think of a decision, you know, what feels um, maybe scary, but totally exciting um, versus, oh, I think I should do this. And when I've made some very bad decisions in business, um, it's usually been because I had this pit in my stomach and thought I should do it because it made sense and, um, you know, lost my shirt. So. <laughs> Okay. For me, it's it's about tapping into how is our body feeling. I think we're really um, we're disconnected from our bodies in in our culture. And the more we can get back to thinking about how does a decision make you feel, and when you do this kind of work, what's your energy like? Are you exhausted at the end of the day, or are you um, kind of revved up? You know. Right. And so that's. For me, I'm I'm looking for situations and work that makes me revved up, and uh, and sometimes that's being a renegade and standing out and doing things different. Yeah, and I think that's really important because one of the conversations that comes up a lot is um, because we have gray hair, is people saying, you know, when are you going to retire? Mm -hmm. And I hate that question. I yeah. hate that question yeah. for a lot of reasons but one is my work is an extension of myself I mm -hmm. love what I mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. it's not a job it's not you know it's not yeah. I have to clock in and and you know there's whatever so I think that's what happens when we're we have some renegadeness mm -hmm. is that our work and ourselves don't have a division it's mm -hmm. really part of our our love for life exactly and as long as it's still giving you life yes uh, it's it's great to keep going and, and um i think that's why entrepreneurship is so uh, valuable because we can we can stop um we can cut back where we want. We can turn turn away contracts that no longer thrill us and just do the stuff that we really love and yeah. still keep working and still keep contributing. Because I think we have so much to contribute, especially when we get to our 60s where we've got all this wealth of knowledge and um, and we can start mentoring people. In the, so there's no need to uh, retire and play pickleball if that's well, not what you want. <laughs> Right. I wish they called it something other than pickleball myself. <laughs> it's um, a fun game, but but yeah, I, I want a little more. Uh, I want more of a sense of purpose to my life um, as I age. For sure. And Linda's yeah. saying retirement. What's that? What would I do if I retire? Love my work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that Meryl has put together for us is a few steps to embrace our inner renegade so i'm hoping you'll go through this with us and also which we probably should have mentioned ages ago the the rugs that you see behind meryl 
are her rugs. <laughs> That's her artwork. In in case you didn't know that, I wanted to point that out because it Thank is you. it is so stunning and so uh, absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, Dorote has said, I have recently started looking into rest as resistance. Mm. Oh my goodness. Rest is undervalued for us renegades in business, I would say. Ooh, I bet you know Natasha believes that. Mm -hmm. um, wow, rest is resistance. I have never heard that. Anyway, maybe you have, Meryl. Do you want to comment on that? Well, I'm not sure about the rest as resistance other than it, it holds us back when we don't rest enough. You know, I think if we if we still try to, oh, it's a book. Thanks, Dorothea. I'll have to check it out. If if we try to keep pushing through and um and not listening to our bodies, I think that's when our creativity drops, that's when we become less effective. So if we really do take time to uh, to nourish and rest and do self-care, then uh, then that's that's great. So one of the things that um that we put on this uh how to embrace your inner renegade is as we were talking about uh, tuning into your body and thinking about what makes your heart sing, that's really taking the time to truly listen to yourself. Um, one thing I've worked on in the last few years has been not be so busy that I don't have time to sit and think um, and think and think about what I want. And then think about what do I really want? You know, do I want this, this, and this? Or what's what's the best thing I could do? What's the best thing that I could use my energy for at this at this time of my life? And then try things that excite you uh, in business and your personal life. So, um, you know, I started back running a couple of years ago. Uh, I hadn't run for a number of years, and I'm having so much fun. Um, you know, I have to I have to temper it with uh, not overdoing it, or I'll get injured. But uh, you know, I started my day today at 7.30 with running with my friend who's an artist. And, and so we talk about art and stuff and run. And, and it's like a great way to start the day. Um, in awesome. business, you know, try things. Like, so for me, inviting Lisa Laflemme to be my first guest on my webcast. I mean, who would have thought I would want to start a webcast? But, but I feel like I want to do something around renegade conversations. And so it will be fun. That's and then keep a private journal. I'm a big journaling fan. Um, I started writing the week that I uh, that I finished my radiation after breast cancer. And I've been writing pretty much every day since. And both of my books came from my journal. All my uh, design ideas come from my journal. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to uh, have conversations with anyone on this call about how to get started in journaling and, and kind of um, my journal has sketches as well as writing. It's uh, and I use a, a whole lot of ways of um, of opening yourself to the energy that you want in your life by using your journal. And then the last thing is I have a, a creating space community and it's a it's a membership community where I send journaling prompts once a week. And then once a month we get together and we actually um, write and sketch together. We share what each of us is working on. Everybody's involved in some kind of creative aspect. They're not all rug hookers. And, uh, and then we talk about uh, issues that have come up uh, in terms of uh, becoming our, our renegade selves. So it's, it's a kind of a calling all renegades kind of community. So, so you can perfect. find that link there. So yeah, that's how to get started. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think in, in business, you know, testing ideas that excite you mm -hmm. is really important. And that can take some courage, which you've mm -hmm. mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'll share, which has been a challenge for me, but is definitely paying off. I did an interview with a journalist in Paris earlier this year. And she had worked in New York. So we did the interview in English and I didn't think anything about it. Um, it got published and I now have three proposals out in Paris. <laughs> I remember and the day you had your interview and the, the fellow was in a taxi going down the... the road. Yeah. Um, and it's involved hiring people. So trusting... Um, trusting someone to deliver the training in French for me and finding a translator that in France <laughs> because uh, English 
French would not do in Paris, no. um, et cetera. And scary, really scary. Mm. But I was so excited about the possibility that in my lifetime, I would teach a class in Paris. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wonderful. So um, Meryl's put a link to her creating space there in chat for anybody that wants to grab it there. And also you're going to get a copy of this slide deck and you're going to get access to view the recorded version of the webinar. So that'll go out to you later today. And also you're on the list to get announcements about upcoming webinars, but also you'll get announcements from Meryl about her conversation with Lisa Laflamme and other renegades. So we can look forward to your um, speaking with other renegades as well, right? Uh-huh, absolutely. It'll start in mid-September. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that, Meryl. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, I am really looking forward to that. That's going to be awesome. I think it will be fun. And Linda's going to help me with uh, all the technical aspects. So. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So that takes us to our half hour. But if there are questions or comments anybody wants to put in chat, I'll We'll hang out here for a few minutes and see if there's anything that comes up. Um, you are welcome, Dorte. It's been great fun. Um, it really has been great fun to do. And I'm so looking forward to, you know, just discovering a whole bunch of renegades in the coming fall. Mm -hmm. Are you going to? If anybody knows any renegades that they think I should interview, please uh, send me a note. Yeah, that is a great idea. That's a great idea mm -hmm. um, because they could be anywhere in the world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my hope is that this program will not just be uh, Canada or North America, that it will actually. Thank you, Joyce. Mm -hmm. You enjoy your thanks, day. Uh, thanks, Natasha, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Natasha. Um, yeah, that would be very interesting, right, to, to have a really wide variety of ages and people that uh, come. And so even those of you attending this, if you know your renegade, which many of you said, get in touch with Meryl and talk about your renegadeness mm -hmm. um, so that she can include you on her guest list. That would be awesome. That would be really awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, well, thanks everyone. You're gonna hear from Meryl, you're gonna hear from me and uh, any, it's easy to get in touch with either one of us. Derek is saying, that sounds great. Congratulations to you both. I have a couple of people that would be interested in your hooking classes. So we'll be in touch. Great to spend oh, time thanks, with Derek. you. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate that. Corinne, thanks for reminding me of the benefits <laughs> of being a renegade. Sometimes it feels like a bit of a solitary pursuit. I think Absolutely. that's why I wanted to start the renegade conversations is I'd like to build a community of renegades, you know, and, uh, and yep. a uh, networking renegades would be fun to network with, right? Because it would oh, be yeah. very exciting <laughs> and unusual. And Corinne could bring her guitar. And, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's You'd wonderful. be a great guest there, Corinne. Yeah. Actually, right. Because you've done something so outside the box of what is traditional in terms of uh, the legal field so yeah oh, awesome yeah awesome yeah. okay thanks everybody thank you Meryl for doing this thank you me. thank you so much you're welcome <laughs>